The result of the activity 2.13 shows the acceleration of the object depends on the applied force and the mass of the object. Alright, the symbol used, F represents force, small m for mass and small a for acceleration. Okay, look at the result for the first activity. So the graph that we get is a straight line pass through origin. The relationship between acceleration and force can be stated as <coughs> acceleration is directly proportional to the applied force when the mass of an object is fixed or constant. And then we can write this way. A is directly proportional to F. M is constant. From the second activity, the second part of the activity, we plot a graph of A against reciprocal of mass, 1 over M. We also get a straight line pass through the origin. So for this type of graph, we can state as A is directly proportional to reciprocal of M or mass. And we also can state in this form, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass of an object when a constant force is applied on the object. So you can see A directly proportional to 1 divided by M or reciprocal of M. If relate between A and M, the relationship is inversely proportional. Now we want to create equation. That's why we use directly proportional. So we combine eh, these two results from the activity carried out, combining the two relationships, so we get A is directly proportional to F divided by M. Or therefore, we can get F directly proportional to M times A. Or F is directly proportional to M A. So this one we call it a relationship. Actually, from the relationship, we can produce formula. The relationship between force, mass, and acceleration is stated by F is directly proportional to Me. If you still remember, acceleration A, the equation is V minus U divided by T. So you substitute A as V minus U divided by T. So we get F is directly proportional to M multiply bracket V minus U divided by T. Or we can write down as F is directly proportional to MV minus MU divided by T. Actually, the second part here, the second expression here, is known as Newton's second law of motion. So you still remember, we have discussed under 2.4 about Newton's first law of motion that is related to inertia. Now this topic, we discuss about Newton's second law of motion. So what is stated by Newton's second law of motion? Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force and acts in the direction of applied force. From the relationship we get, F is directly proportional to MA. If we change the relationship to equation, so it becomes F equals KMA. We must put a constant K. You can see this symbol is directly proportional. If you want to change relationship to equation, you need to write down equals to one constant k. So it becomes uh, F equals k and a, and k is a constant. The value of k, actually, we can determine from experiment or activity that carried out as above. So how we determine the value of k? The value of k is determined if you apply force equals to 1 newton. 
to a trolley of mass 1 kg. It will produce acceleration of 1 meter second negative 2. This is what we get through the experiment. If force applied is 1 newton, the mass of the trolley is 1 kg. If we calculate the acceleration, we should get 1 meter second negative 2. So if we substitute all the values in, the, in this equation, F equals to 1, M equals to 1, A equals to 1, meaning we will get K equals to 1. So this value of K actually determined through the experiment. Therefore, we can conclude that K equals to 1. So the formula for Newton's second law of motion can be stated as F equals to MA. Or F equals to mass multiply acceleration. So it's very important for you all to memorize what is stated by Newton's second law of motion. And you must be able to write down the formula related to Newton's second law of motion. Because later we will discuss about the problem solving using the formula. Okay, now, if we refer again to the formula, the word rate of change or momentum. Here, from the expression of Newton's second law, you get F equals mv minus mu divided by t. Here, if you substitute A equals to v minus u divided by t, meaning F equals mv minus mu divided by t. MV minus MU, we call it change in momentum. Rate of change in momentum is equal to MV minus MU divided by T. That's why the Newton's second law is stated this way. Rate of change in momentum is directly proportional to the force. So this one, uh, this uh, expression uh, on the right here is rate of change of momentum f is force so the relationship is directly proportional okay now we look at the problem solving using f equals to ma look at example one a worker pulls a load of mass 80 kg along a horizontal surface by a force of 160 newton. If the surface is smooth and without any resistance that opposes the motion of the object, what is acceleration of the load? This is the step of problem solving or to find the solution. Look at the first one. What you do, the first step is list the given information in symbols. For example, mass of 80 kg, so you write down M equals 80 kg. Force of 160 newton, so you write down force F equals 160 newton. Okay, this question need you to find what is acceleration. You need to find A. Identify and write down the formula used. So we use F equals to MA. Substitute numerical values into the formula and perform the calculation. Okay, so you substitute the value of F, 160. The value of M, 80. Multiply A. Then you can solve mathematically what is A. So you get A equals 2 meter second negative 2. So you get... Uh, the solution for the first example. Alright, second example. A car of mass 1,200 kg moves with a velocity of 30 meters second negative 1. When the brakes of the car are applied, the car stops in 5 seconds. Calculate the average braking force of the car. Solution. It's better for you all to list down all the information given. For example, M equals 1,200 kilogram. Initial velocity, 30 meters second negative 1. 
you can see the keywords here brakes of the car applied the car stop when car stop meaning the final velocity equals to zero in five seconds meaning time taken five seconds calculate average braking force okay not to worry about the names eh? here the main terms here is force so you need to calculate force okay calculate calculate deceleration of the car Okay, so we use A equals V minus U divided by T. So final velocity 0, initial velocity 30, time taken 5. So you get negative 6 meters second negative 2. Meaning acceleration of the car is negative 6 meters second negative 2. What is average braking force? F equals to MA. M, 1,200. A is negative. Then we get negative 7,200 Newton. The negative sign shows that the force acts in opposite direction to the motion of the car. So this one we call it braking force. Eh? There's a friction act at the wheels of the car that stop the car. Meaning if the car move forward, the braking force acts backward. That's why direction is negative. Okay, now you can continue. Do the experiment, uh, do the, the pro, uh, solve the problem uh, of formative practice 2.6 into your exercise book. Point six. So we have done for this topic. So for the experiment that carried out earlier by using the ticker timer, we also can carry out the experiment by using a photo gate. If your school have the apparatus eh, of uh, photo gate, so you can use the photo gate to determine the velocity of the trolley and acceleration of the trolley. Okay, another method of carrying out this activity. Instead of using elastic string, you can use another method. For me, I prefer using this uh, experiment eh, instead of using the elastic string. So you can look at this one. You can refer to the video. So item needed for the experiment. So we have dynamic trolley, a rail, Ticker timer, a tape, ticker tape, measuring tape, cotton <coughs> thread, and this one is the carbon, uh, carbon pepper. So we have a load, we have pulley. Look at how they arrange. So we don't use the the incline runaway. We just use a flat surface to study this uh, motion. This is the ticker timer. Put the trolley eh, on the rail, runway. They use rail. That one is the ticker timer. Connect to the power supply. Tie a string. The string is connected to a load. We use a trolley here so that for the load can uh, easily uh, move down and pull the trolley along. So the, the use of the load actually represents the force supply. So we use one load, one load meaning force is F1. We can repeat the experiment maybe five times using different number of load. 
So meaning this activity is relationship between force and acceleration. Okay. So we have a constant mass of the trolley, M1, and then we repeat with different number of loads, then we have different forces act on the trolley. Okay, second activity, you want to change the mass, meaning relationship between mass and the mass and the acceleration. So you can make it constant, the number of load, in, or you change the number of trolleys. So you can increase the mass of the trolley. So using the same number of load, meaning force is constant. So you get the ticker tape. From the ticker tape, you can calculate the acceleration for both of the activity. Okay. So you can record all the readings of the acceleration, then plot the crowd. So for me, I prefer this activity. So that easy for us. Eh? Instead of need to stretch the elastic cord to the same length, eh? it's quite hard. So I use a number of load to represent the Force. Okay, so you record the reading in the table and then you can plot a graph. Okay, that one is another idea of carrying out this activity for force and acceleration and mass and acceleration. Okay.